Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will discuss about amplitude modulation with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. See, in this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of amplitude modulation. After that, I will discuss about types of amplitude modulation. After that, I will explain waveforms of amplitude modulation. And at last, I will derive parameters of amplitude modulation. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of amplitude modulation. First of all, you need to understand what is modulation. See, modulation is a process which converts low frequency message signal into high frequency signal. So here what we do is we change the characteristics of carrier signal with respect to modulating signal. So in modulation, what we do is we change the characteristics of carrier signal with respect to message signal or one can say modulating signal. In amplitude modulation, what we do is we change the amplitude of carrier signal with respect to message signal. So modulation is a process in which we modify the characteristics of carrier signal with respect to message signal. Message signal is low frequency signal and after modulation, modulated signal will be high frequency signal, right? So here in modulation process, we change the characteristics of carrier signal with respect to message signal. In amplitude modulation, we modify the amplitude of carrier signal with respect to message signal, right? See, currently in 2025, there are two essential applications of amplitude modulation that people are using. One is AM radio broadcast and second is public address systems. So in this two applications, we use amplitude modulation. Now let me discuss about different types of amplitude modulation. See, in general, there are four categories. First one is DSBFC means double sideband full carrier. Second one is DSBSC means double sideband suppressed carrier. Third one is SSBSC means single sideband suppressed carrier. And fourth one is VSB means vestigial sideband. See in this video, I will explain DSBFC means double sideband full carrier. With DSBFC, we have in total three different bands. One is carrier band that is having frequency omega c. Second is upper side band that is having frequency omega c plus omega m. And third one is lower side band that is having frequency omega c minus omega m. See in DSBSC, we will be eliminating carrier band. And in SSBSC, we will just transmit either upper side band or lower side band. And in future coming videos, I will discuss about DSBSC, SSBSC and VSB with great clarity. In this video, I will discuss about DSBFC that is also referred as amplitude modulation, right? First of all, let me explain you the waveforms of amplitude modulation. So here we will be having low frequency message signal that we will be converting into high frequency signal based on carrier signal. So let us consider here we have low frequency message signal that is appearing like this you can observe. And this message signal that is having highest frequency that is omega m. So in frequency response by triangular pattern I have represented it. See here we have plus omega m right by triangular pattern I have represented it means bandwidth of this message signal that is omega m right. Now let me plot carrier signal that is high frequency signal you can observe and this carrier signals amplitude that will change with respect to message signal in modulated signal right and this is carrier signal that is sinusoidal signal you can observe as it is sinusoidal signal it will be having impulse in its frequency response. If I say this carrier signal is having frequency omega c then in its frequency response, there will be impulse only. See here we have plus omega c impulse, you can observe. 
here negative frequency that we have represented but you need to focus about positive frequency range only right now in amplitude modulation what we do we change amplitude of carrier signal with respect to message signal so in amplitude modulated signal you can observe the envelope of this so envelope of this that is similar to message signal envelope you can observe right so here what we are doing we are modifying amplitude of carrier signal with respect to message signal and this is amplitude modulated signal right let me explain the frequency response of this see in its frequency response here we have center frequency that is carrier frequency omega c and over this side we have upper side band this upper side band that is having cutoff frequency that is omega c plus omega m and over this side we have lower side band that is having cutoff frequency that is omega c minus omega m right so that is how frequency response that will be appearing right now i will explain parameters of amplitude modulation so here now i am going to derive parameters of amplitude modulation to derive parameters of amplitude modulation we need to consider message signal as a standard signal so here we have message signal x of t let us consider that is having frequency omega m so here i am going to consider message signal to be vm cos omega mt here omega m that is a frequency of message signal that is low frequency signal and here we have carrier signal that will be high frequency signal let us consider that is having frequency omega c so here now i am going to consider carrier signal c of t that is vc cos omega c t now based on this two signal we can identify amplitude modulated signal see in amplitude modulation what we do we change the amplitude of carrier signal with respect to modulating signal right so modulating signal is a message signal so here in amplitude modulation we will be changing amplitude of carrier signal with respect to modulating signal right so here if you talk about amplitude modulated signal y of t then in this here amplitude that will be changing with respect to message signal for this carrier signal so now let us consider amplitude is a dash that is changing with respect to message signal so what is this a dash see this a dash that will be this vc that is amplitude of carrier signal and this amplitude is changing with respect to message signal so here plus x of t that i need to write right so that is how amplitude modulated signal that is there with us now let me substitute the value of x of t see this x of t is vm cos omega mt and now i will simplify this so here we have vc into cos omega ct so let us write it over here we see cos omega c t and over here we have v m cos of omega m t cos of omega c t right now here what we can do is we can use cos a into cos b rule right let me write that over here see 2 cos a cos b that will be cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b so that rule that i'll apply over here so here what we need to do is we need to multiply and divide 2 with this so here we will be having vm by 2 right and here we will be having cos of omega c plus omega m into t and again we will be having vm by 2 into cos of omega c minus omega m into t 
right now let me further simplify this here one should know the basic definition of modulating index let me explain that see modulating index mu is equals to amplitude of message signal divided by amplitude of carrier signal right so this is the basic definition of modulating index that one should know so based on this one can say vm is equals to mu into vc right so we will be having modulated signal y of t that will be vc cos of omega ct and instead of vm you can write modulating index mu into vc right over here also you can write vm is equals to mu vc right so that is how one can derive equation of amplitude modulation now you need to understand this equation see in this equation we have first frequency component that is having frequency omega c so this is carrier band or one can say this is carrier right that is having frequency omega c See, this is having frequency that is omega c plus omega m and that is upper side band. This is upper side band. And here, see, this is third band that is having frequency omega c minus omega m. So that is lower side band. Now, let me plot this as a frequency response. So here we have amplitude and here we have frequency. If you observe, here we have center frequency that is having carrier frequency omega c. So here we have center frequency that is having carrier frequency omega c and that is having amplitude vc, right. If you observe, here we have upper side band and here we have lower side band. See this upper side band that is having frequency omega c plus omega m. So here we have upper side band and this upper side band that is having frequency omega c plus omega m and that is having amplitude that is mu vc divided by 2 or one can say that is vm by 2 as well right. So this amplitude that is vm by 2 even or one can say mu vc by 2 and this is lower side band that is having frequency that is omega c minus omega m and that is having amplitude mu vc by 2 or one can say vm by 2 right so in amplitude modulated signal we have three different bands center is having carrier frequency that is having amplitude vc this is upper side band that is having amplitude vm by 2 or one can say mu vc by 2 and frequency is omega c plus omega m and this is lower side band that is having frequency omega c minus omega m so that is how three bands are there now earlier i have told you in amplitude modulation in general we have four categories so with first category dsb fc we have all three bands right with dsb sc carrier is suppressed means in dsb sc this carrier band this vc cos omega ct that is not available while if you talk about ssb sc if you talk about single side band suppressed carrier then in that either we have upper side band or we have lower side band and carrier is also suppressed right so in ssb sc either we have omega c plus omega m band or we have omega c minus omega m band right and here we have impulses in frequency response why the reason is here we have considered this message signal to be cosine signal right if it is having band then here there will be band available over here but as those are simply sinusoidal signals here there is impulse response that is happening right so these are the essential equations that you need to remember the reason is based on this modulating index based on this amplitude and frequency in future i'll be solving problems
Thank you so much for watching this video. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.